One of the things about the Qur'an, it's really beautiful. The Prophet himself would describe it as وَهُوَ حَبْلُ اللَّهِ الْمَتِينَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ It is an extended rope of Allah from the sky to the earth. The Qur'an is a rope of Allah from the sky to the earth. The Qur'an will say وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا Hold on to Allah's rope altogether. And Allah's rope, as many of the companions commented, is actually the Qur'an. Hold on to the Qur'an. I told you before, we've been sent down, there has to be a way that we can go back up. And now we're learning that a rope was given. And this rope, لَنْفِصَامَ laha, It cannot crack like a chain that link would be broken. It will not snap. It will remain. And it will remain extended until humanity comes to an end. Generations will come and go, but this rope of Allah, that final rope of Allah that has been given will never be cut once again. The, the, the teachings that were given, the guidance that was given to Musa alayhi salam, to Salih alayhi salam, to Shu'ayb alayhi salam, to, pre, to Nuh alayhi salam, those guidances that they were given, a time came where people forgot them and they were lost. Or people changed them and they couldn't find the truth anymore. But now Allah gave this guidance that will forever remain a means by which people can make their way back to Allah again. And that is the word of Allah, that is the Qur'an. And that Qur'an, meaning that final episode of the promise of Allah, given to Adam alayhi salam in the beginning of Baqarah, that promise of Allah reaches its climax when Allah says, Shahru Ramadan, alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. The month of Ramadan is the one in which the Qur'an was sent down. This is the ultimate gift of Allah to all of humanity so they can make their way back to the home that was meant for them because it was given as a gift to their father. So we can make it back all the way to the closeness of Allah again. This is actually as just an introductory, just a notion. What is it that we're celebrating? We're celebrating the fulfillment of Allah's promise. The, the promise of hope. And understand, there are, there are people sitting in this audience and people that might watch this recording that felt like at some point they were close to Allah. That some feel like, I used to be a good person. Or there was a time where I was kind of much better than where I am. And you fell, you slipped. And you slipped really far. And you feel like you're so far away from Allah now. There's no hope for you. You've been listening to shaitan, and you are now just lost, gone. And it is, I can tell you, as far as you think you and I are from Allah, I don't think we can compare to someone who used to be in Jannah and was put down, demoted into the earth. That's a pretty low, that's a, that's a pretty serious demotion, you know? To someone who was so close to Allah that Allah would speak to him directly. And then Allah says to him, no, 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 no more will I speak to you directly, now I will speak to you through revelation. He's that distance, and even he has hope. He has hope in what revelation will come and it will reconnect me to my Rabb. The Qur'an is not there to condemn you to hell. The Qur'an is not there to let you know that you have no hope. The Qur'an is Allah's promise that you and I, no matter what mistakes we've made, no matter how far we've fallen, no matter how lost we feel we are, we are going to be like our father, we are not going to be like Iblis. Iblis and ablasa as a verb even in the Arabic language it means to lose hope. One of the meanings of Iblis is to lose hope. We will not become hopeless. We are going to maintain hope first and foremost in ourselves when you start telling yourself you're a lost cause. I'm just a bad person, what can I do? When you start saying that about yourself, then you have actually followed the sunnah of Iblis. He's accepted about himself that he's evil. But human beings have been given the opportunity, you will make mistakes. Kullubani Adam khata'un. All children of Adam are going to make mistakes repeatedly. Khata'un actually is different from khati'un even. The Prophet ﷺ says they'll keep making mistakes. It's not even that you make a mistake once, you're like addicted to making mistakes. I'm addicted to making mistakes. And yet, those who keep on making mistakes, the best of them are the ones who keep coming back to Allah, and keep coming back to Allah, and keep coming back to Allah. This is the month that was given. This month is celebrating that opportunity to come back to Allah, because this is when Allah threw, threw His rope down, His Qur'an down, His words down, that can keep us always and always connected to Him. You know, when you really miss someone, you want to call them. You want to hear their voice. If somebody's passed away and you miss them, what do you do? You play a recording of them. And you just, you know, watch this child laugh or this parent talk to you or whatever. When people reminisce or want to connect with someone, it's necessary that they feel like they're engaged in conversation with them. 
When we feel far away from Allah, we need to be in conversation with Him. We want to hear His words, and that's what Allah gave us, His words. That's what He gave us, subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the month, this is an opportunity of a lifetime. It's something so, so beautiful that Allah Azza wa Jal gave to us that He, and the one who caused Adam alayhi salam to slip, He chains him up in this month. He puts him on the side, so you will not be distracted again. You, there will be nothing between you and Allah's word. You will be connected to it, subhanAllah. And so as I conclude this khutbah, I want to share with you one of the gifts of this month. There are several mentioned in the ayat of Ramadan. I just want to leave you with one that I really hope that you and I can take full advantage of. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ When my slave asks you about me, then certainly I am near. Allah did not say if my slave asks, He says when my slave asks, because He expects that absolutely it will happen. He's optimistic about you. You may not be optimistic about yourself, Allah is optimistic about you. He tells His Prophet wasallam, when they ask you about me, our expectation was that the, Allah would tell him, when they ask you, you tell them that I'm close. But no, when they ask you, Allah stops talking to His Messenger and talks to you and me directly and says, I am close for sure. Halfway through that ayah, the conversation is no longer with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The conversation is between you and Allah directly. You haven't talked to Allah in a long time. You feel like when you, do, you don't talk to someone, you feel like they don't want to talk to you. Where were you all this time? You want to go through somebody else. Is he still mad at me? You know, you don't want to deal with them directly. But Allah Azza wa Jalla breaks that wall. He comes to you directly and says, I am most certainly near. فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ And then you feel like you've been so far away. Why would he answer my prayers? And he says, أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّعْ I immediately respond to the single dua of the one who makes dua. The single prayer, the single request, the single call of the one who made the call. In other words, in this beautiful ayah, Allah isn't even talking about the one who makes hours and hours of dua. He's talking about someone who turned to Allah just one time. Even one time. Allah doesn't say, oh, okay. All this time you party, and now you need something and you come to me for dua. Get lost. No, 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 no. I will immediately respond even to that person. At that one time that they made the dua. And what are his qualifications? You know, we feel like if you're going to be able to address someone important, you should have prerequisites. That is always the case. And even spiritually speaking, people might you know, feel, well, if you're going to make dua to Allah, then you better be dressed properly. You better be in the masjid. It's the best place to make dua is the haram or the Kaaba or al-masjid al-nabawi. Or you have better, you know, have stopped sinning and then you should make dua, etc. And all of those things are true. But in this ayah of hope, Allah says, the only qualification I need from you is that you're ready to make the dua. That's it. You could be in the lowest, in the pits of darkness, just turn back to Allah, nobody else. You're not doing this to show anybody else how religious you are, or to impress anybody else, or you're not concerned about the judgment of anybody else. People around you and me will think much, they either think much better than who we are, or much worse than who we are. People around you think you're a really good person, and you know what you are. Or people around you think you're a horrible human being, yet there's no goodness in you. And neither of them know. Allah knows, Allah knows, and you know. You don't let the judgment of people fool you. You don't let you, yourself do that. You don't even know where you stand, only Allah truly knows. So you leave all of those judgments behind. Doesn't matter what people say about you, good or bad, it doesn't matter what they say about you. You just turn to Allah and you ask Him. You forgot about the noise, all the other noise. And whenever you make that dua, إِذَا دَعَان I will respond to the one who makes the call. I, and I will, Allah says, respond immediately whenever he makes the call. This is in the context of this, the month of Ramadan, especially in the month of Ramadan, because Allah has extended his rope, call on Allah. Ask Allah for things. Speak with Allah. Speak with Allah when you're alone. Speak with Allah when you're in the car. You don't have to speak to Allah in Arabic, it's okay. You can speak to him in Punjabi, it's fine. You can speak to him in Bangla. You can speak to him in English, it's, it's completely fine. You, can speak to, you don't have to speak to him in Fusha, you can speak to him in Ammiya, it's cool. Allah Azza wa Jalla taught all languages. If you don't know the language of, of the, the scripture, it's fine. You, but but the, the thing Allah wants from you is to connect to him directly, first and foremost. To speak with him, to call on him. To call on him. How many people actually call on Allah? Talk to Allah. 
Beg before Allah, cry before Allah. The more you will talk to him, you know, we, we, we feel awkward. Somebody might see me talking to, talking to myself in the car. You know, maybe I've got a psychological problem. And you know, this is what's called Iman Bil Ghaib. You truly believe in the end. If you feel awkward, then you feel like he's not really listening. If you truly believe that he's listening, talk to him. Who cares about what, any, what anybody else thinks? That's just between you and him. And so he makes a request of you. He gave you an offer. I'll answer your prayers when you call. Whenever you call, I will answer. But on the flip side of it, he made a request from you. He says, فَلْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي Then at the very least, they should at least try to respond to me. You're talking to Allah, and Allah says, I'll respond to you. But now Allah says, you should respond to me too. Or at least try to respond to me too. He didn't say respond, because that would mean you have to be perfect. He said, try to respond, istijaba. At least show me the desire to respond. But if you want to respond to someone, you have to hear them first. It's impossible to respond to somebody unless you listen to them. If there was no request made, there's no response. If there's no questions asked, there's no response. So the fact that Allah is asking for a response means He's asking you to listen to Him first. But how do you listen to Allah? Oh wait, that's what the word of Allah is. When you're reciting the word of Allah, when you're listening to the word of Allah, when you're thinking about the word of Allah, you're listening to things that require a response. That's Allah talking to you. So He says, it's time. You're speaking to me, let me speak to you too. You want me to respond, why don't you res try and respond to me too? This is telling us that the Qur'an at its core is actually a conversation between the slave and the master. Dua is when we speak to Allah, Qur'an is when Allah speaks to us. I hope you guys enjoyed that video clip. My team and I have been working tirelessly to try to create as many resources for Muslims to give them first steps in understanding the Qur'an all the way to the point where they can have a deep, profound understanding of the Qur'an. We are students of the Qur'an ourselves and we want you to be students of the Qur'an alongside us. Join us for this journey on BayinaTV.com where thousands of hours of work have already been put in and don't be intimidated, it's step by step by step so you can make learning the Qur'an a part of your lifestyle. There's lots of stuff available on YouTube but it's all over the place. If you want an organized approach to studying the Qur'an beginning to end for yourself, your kids, your family and even among peers, that would be the way to go. Sign up for BayinaTV.com.